Welcome in everybody, and today we are going to be learning how to hobslide in Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped in the Insane Trilogy Edition. So first off, what is hobsliding? Created, founded by GDQ and streamer speedrunner legend Jay Hobbs, it is just a faster pace of movement while utilizing your slide spin ability. So there's a few things that you're going to need for the setup of a hop slide. Number one being any surface that is raised from the one you are currently standing on. So you see we are on bare ground right now. So anything, this bench, this wall, or even this higher up ground will all suffice for what we need. But it needs to be something that is slightly higher up than you are. Next, you'll need to understand some of your movement tech. So you'll see in the giant controller in the top left for me, you will see that we are moving around. And if we are moving in any direction and we press R1, Crash will perform a slide. You'll see at the end of that slide that Crash has a little hiccup step, or if you hold it too long, you actually end up crawling. What you're able to do to mitigate this slowdown is utilize your slide, and at the end of it, you'll be pressing the square button in order to do a spin. And it'll look something like this, where you see Crash is maintaining a faster pace via the slide without having the hiccup at the end with the slowdown. So you'll have to understand how to do your slide spin, which is again, just pressing R1 and then square at the end of it. And you'll see, uh, later on that there's a bit of timing that we're going to have to utilize with that, but I won't get ahead of myself quite, quite yet. So what you're going to have to do after that is obviously get up onto a different piece of, um, of the ground. So at this point, you're going to want to utilize your slide spin. So again, that's R1 and square, and then press X at the end of it to do a jump. Now, the main reasoning that hob sliding works in the first place is because you are tricking the game into believing that you are sliding basically before you're able to. And that takes the acceleration and the momentum of crash and basically not turns it infinite, but locks it into the pace that you see there when sliding rather than when crash is walking. So if you're able to pull this off correctly, you will use R1 square and X to get up onto the bench. But as you're landing on the bench, you're going to continue to spam slide spins, which is again, R1 and square. So if you do it correctly, it'll look something like this. And you'll see that Crash is able to keep the pace that is much faster than what we are now seeing if you are able to break your own chain. So as you see, again, you can break your hob slide chain. It is a very frame tight trick to do. So once you're able to start to chain together your spins, you are able to mistime it. Now, as I said before, you can kind of see that there are a few things that go along with this, both audio and visually. You'll see whenever Crash does his slide spin, you can both hear animations of the slide and the spin and see Crash does things like put his hand behind his back or during his spin, turns 75d whatever that might be referred to to understand the timing of when to continue to chain your hob slides together i use the following information whenever you see crash sliding you will see he puts his hand behind him whenever he does the slide i utilize that visual cue to know that that is my time to officially hit the spin button now for the spin to understand when to go back into your next slide, I use an audio cue. So when sliding, I use the hand behind Crash. While he's spinning, you can hear about a second to a second and a half long animation. About three fourths of the way through that animation is when I know that I can start sliding again. So we're not hob sliding at the moment, but you can see there is no hiccup in the way that Crash is moving at the moment. At the moment. So, if we are able to chain that all together, again, R1 and square is your slide spin, R1 square and then X to jump up onto a higher platform, and then just continue to spam your R1 and squares. But you do have to make sure that you're sliding almost instantly when hitting the next platform, because the whole point again, is to make the game thinking that you're moving a lot faster than it thinks you should be able to. So to chain that all together, R1 square X, and then a bunch of R1s in a row, and it should hopefully look something like this. And you'll see here that Crash is moving infinitely faster than he would normally, and you will be able to fly through levels in Crash 3, and maybe with a stroke of genius and hard work, you can become a speedrunner just like me. But honestly, this is one of the easier games to speedrun, one of the more fun games to speedrun. So thank you guys so much for watching my tutorial today on how to hob slide. I hope you come check me out at twitch.tv forward slash get smiggy. And that's all I got for you today. So I love you all. See you next time.